Thank you very much. The lawyer who's uh, leading this legal team in this selective prosecution with such tremendous first minute complications is Michael Leibowitz. He'll be our next speaker. Michael. I'm Mike Leibowitz. Um, I'm also a veteran of the Iraq conflict. I served in the Pathfinder Company of the 101st Airborne Division in 2005 and 2006. I have a prepared statement. This case is important because it affects hundreds of thousands of Iraq and war on terror veterans. As the first of a number of cases where the military is seeking to stifle political speech of IRR civilians, we need to draw a line in the sand now in order to protect the First Amendment rights of others who may have picked up a rifle in defense of our country. Free speech rights of recently discharged veterans should not be inferior to that of those who may not have served. I expect to deliver that message directly during the course of these proceedings. This, the type of hearing that Adam Kokesh and other IRR civilians are facing is almost exclusively limited to inherently crimi criminal acts such as drugs or violence, not peaceful political statements. Politicians and military officials are quick to tell the media that we must support our veterans. But seeking to make political speech that was spoken by a civilian veteran into, as the Marines say, a dishonorable act of misconduct and a serious offense is certainly not supporting our nation's veterans. Finally, I just want to add that the Marine Corps asked for this fight. We're going to bring it to their turf in Kansas City, and we are going to give it to them. Thank you. All right. I'll let Michael answer that. Well, that's an excellent question. Um, the thing you got to realize about the IRR is they're not typical reservists. They're officially emergency manpower personnel. The only obligation for members of the IRR is two things. One is to let the military have their contact details in case they are going to be called back to Iraq, which in case then they have to abide by an order telling them to go back to duty. Other than that, other Department of Defense directives actually state they are former service members and in fact are civilians. So to use regulations against an IRR member is, is flat out wrong and it, they don't apply it. No justification for that. It doesn't apply. Basically, for one thing, first, I want to clar or clarify that military regulations do not apply to civilians. Just like, you know, half the people here that are regular civilians, reporters here, it does not apply. Um, and the regulations they do state are very arbitrary, and they say you can wear your uniform in some things and certain political events, but not other political events. So, to answer a previous question, I would say this definitely does have First Amendment ramifications. Did Adam and others wear the uniform at these anti-war protests do so knowing that they're challenging DOD regulations? Well, the first thing I would respond to that is that they actually took off their military insignias. They, uh, there's Velcro, if you're not familiar with uh, military uniforms. So for Adam's case, he took off U.S. Marines, he took off his name, he took off his rank insignia. That is not a uniform. Anybody in the military will tell you that is he was not in uniform, and he had made no as the military states, uh, Adam made no indication that to tell people that he was part of the military. In fact, he made it clear that he was acting as a civilian and not as part of a military member. 